it's Mary. Welcome back to the channel. So excited you could be joining me. If this is your first time stopping by, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and the bell. And if you like the video, a thumbs up. And if you're returning, welcome back. So today I wanted to talk about something that was near and dear to me. And I'm just kind of going to talk about how I'm feeling in the moment, particularly because this is kind of very fresh for me as I'm on a, a journey like we all are. But this one, this topic in particular is something that's really I'm diving into. So it all started when I picked up the book fairly recently, I actually read it pretty quickly, called The Secrets of the Millionaire Mind. And it's written by T. Harv Ecker or Eker. Um, it's essentially a book that gives you permission to number one, identify how you view money and wealth from what he calls the blueprint, your money blueprint, and then how to kind of break free from that to really live the abundant life that you want. And I found that throughout the, uh, the book, there was some parts that didn't quite resonate with me. And I, took my took a second and said why doesn't this quite resonate with me is it my money blueprint is it sort of how I've always viewed things and now he's challenging that and so I really took a lot of reflection through this book reading and I enjoyed it thoroughly now, he's kind of harsh at times but it's more like tough love than it is anything else but if you've been wired for so long to think of money and rich people as a certain way then reading this really does kind of undo what you've been thinking your whole life. For example, I'll share with you, it wasn't until a couple years ago where I realized that I never shot for the money stars because I only ever wanted enough to pay the bills. And I wondered why I felt that way. And then I kind of did a deeper look into my childhood. So we grew up, um, we always had what we needed, not always had what we wanted. And we grew up, I would say, probably middle middle class, a little less than middle class, I guess, back then, we're talking the 80s. Um, so we had, like I said, we had everything that we needed. Um, but you know, we didn't have the luxuries that some wealthier people might have. But I do recall quite a lot as I kind of look back in my childhood, times when things were said like rich people are snobby or money makes you evil or you know, if you become money, if you become rich, you'll become greedy, like those kinds of things. And it associated rich wealth um, or rich people with that for me. And so I never wanted to be seen as one of those people. I only ever wanted to be seen as someone who was generous, someone who was kind hearted and just, you know, all of the good things, right? Never anything that I had associated with rich people. But as I'm reading through this book and I'm learning so much about how that was my blueprint, I'm realizing I need to undo that. And really for this one main purpose, the main purpose that I want to undo that for myself is because it makes so much more sense for me to reach the money stars so that I can be the most generous that I could be. That to me is something far more rewarding than staying where I'm at just because I would feel badly for having more than someone else. So I started down this journey and I started working towards this mindset shift for myself. And I don't know if you've ever experienced this, but when you're on a journey, to do something new, to expand your horizons, the universe kind of throws you some tests just to see if you're serious enough to keep going. So I got a comment on one of my YouTube videos from my other YouTube channel, which is my crafting channel. Now I did this uh, room tour, which is the room you see behind me, and I had shared how I organize things and what it looks like, and it's my sanctuary, it's also my office, and it's my craft room and studio and all that. So I did this whole tour, uh, for this channel and everyone, not everyone, <laughs> most people were really, really kind and generous with their compliments. They were really impressed with the room. It was nice to see how I organize things and to kind of help them, you know, get their, their room set up or whatnot. But one person in particular took a different route. And so I'm going to read the encounter between this individual and myself. So this person, uh, I suppose the name is pronounced no one says, Oh my God, I just got that. <laughs> I literally just got that as I'm reading it. No one. Okay. Well played. No one. 
So this person says, I get the idea that paper crafting is for rich, middle-aged white women with craft rooms. Can paper craft be fun even for women and men and non-gendered to enjoy out of a single 15 gallon plastic container? And this, when I read that, I was kind of confused because I didn't really understand. I knew they were trying to be kind of cheeky about it and kind of, kind of rude, but I also didn't want to discount their question because I spend a lot of time on my channel. Well, I'll just read my reply. So my reply said, yes, yes, and yes. Check out my channel for money savings and space saving tips. It's a priority of mine. This is not a one dimensional hobby by any means. Also, I never considered myself rich or middle-aged, but I suppose you categorize me correctly. The amount of love, health, joy, and peace I have in my life these days makes me feel like the richest woman on earth. Thank you for that reminder. I also wanted to share that once I started focusing more on what I do have and less on what my life lacks, more came my way. Not sure if you're stuck in that place, but wanted to share all my love. To which this person replied, when so many people have nothing to eat today, I don't think a woman with an entire craft room filled with tens of thousands of dollars of non-essential stuff she will probably never touch outside of shuffling it around once in a while can really say she's not rich. I don't equate owning more things with having a better life. I equate owning more things with a fundamental emotional insecurity, perhaps from a neglectful childhood where you didn't get the things you wanted, so you have to hoard now. I just wanted to share. And then I replied back, I appreciate you sharing this and being vulnerable. I'm here for you. So that was the encounter between me and this person. And it was so, it was such an interesting situation that I had gone through as I was processing this, uh, this comment. For one, this comment kind of unveiled everything I had feared in my, you know, before I started this journey. And that was, I didn't want people to see me as some selfish, greedy, you know, hoarder of stuff and, you know, all of those things. And so this person highlighted that, right? And when someone highlights what is seemingly an insecurity of yours, it makes it even worse, right? Because it's like, I've been trying to hide that or not have people see that and here you go. How many other people feel that way? And so I really had to process through that. Now, what was really rewarding for me was that I had started this journey of shifting my mindset around so many things, not just money. Money is just one aspect of that. But it really was a great test to me because I have, first of all, I've realized how far I've come with my security and who I am and really loving myself and what I have to offer so that when someone comes at me with something negative, it doesn't affect me in the same way. Years ago, I would have read this and I would have wallowed in this for quite some time. And now I read it and I more along the lines thought of that person and had compassion for that person, that they weren't in that space. And so it was really a, a test for me in so many ways, spiritually and you know, in, in community and in social, like that was really important for me to respond the way I did because I really have compassion for that individual, that that's what they saw from me. Which brings me to another point, and that is our ability to exercise emotional intelligence when we're communicating with others. The reason I use this as an example, and I can use many, many examples out there when it comes to emotional intelligence, but I'll use this because it's right here and it's in front of us and we're talking about it today. But this individual didn't take any sort of time to get to know me, to see how I operate on my channel, D doesn't know that I host fundraisers twice a year so that we could come together and de-stash some of the stuff we're not using, repurpose it, and then use that money for donations. We were able to raise $2,000 for the Wounded Warrior Project recently. So it doesn't, doesn't take the time to get to know that or didn't take the time to get to know that I've been in the service for 23 years, just retired, we finally bought our first home, I finally have a craft room and I was excited to share it with people. Like those are things that are the background story to what this individual didn't take the time to see or didn't care to know. And that's really important for us as we interact with one another and we build relationships and we're working with our coworkers, whomever, it's really important to understand there is an underlayer and you may never know it. You may never see it or hear about it or have a YouTube channel where you can go discover it on your own, right? That's not always a thing for people. What is a fact is that there is 
that beneath the surface area where we just don't know. We don't know why people respond the way they do or act the way they do. But we do have the power to show empathy and compassion and just maybe think of it from another person's perspective before we pass judgment. And that's really, really what I wanted to share today. I'm not upset about this comment. I'm actually really grateful that this person shared this with me because it allowed me the opportunity to exercise all of the mindset shifting that I've been trying to do and to know that I'm on the right path and that I'm going towards the right direction. And so I hope that this was helpful for you. When people give you what seems like negative feedback or criticism, I want you to take a moment and just think about how you want to react. What is that feeling inside you? Are you angry? Are you defensive? Are you upset? Are you insulted? What is that? And then dive into that and look at why that might be. Because really, if someone is offering you some information, you can take away something from it. And for me, this individual offered me some clarity on my own journey. And I am so grateful for that. So that's what I wanted to talk about today. Thank you so much for stopping by and for hanging out with me. I hope you all have a fabulous week and I will see you all in the next video. Bye-bye.